Hello and welcome to Here's the Thing with Robbie and Jose, where we explore relationships through a male and female perspective. With me as always is the lovely Robbie. Hello, Jose. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm well. <laughs> I got a, a surprise for you for today. You do? I do. Am so, I going to like the surprise? Oh, uh, Yeah, I think so. Okay, it's not good. that big, but I bought of our very first prop for the podcast that oh, I was wow. thinking maybe this is something we could have out on the table when we're recording right. and use it. I'm with, intrigued. Okay. I'm intrigued. So every kid in our generations for sure had this thing growing up. And if you didn't own this thing, I will be shocked. Okay. If you didn't own it, you at least played with this before. Okay. So what I bought was Ta-da! Oh, the magic eight ball. Yeah, I knew a kid that had one. Yeah, I didn't Dude, have one myself. But I don't yeah. know if this is still like a. It's profound. You know, you yeah. can ask it. You can ask the universe exactly. for tons of stuff, and so, it'll give you back answers. For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, there is this toy, and I actually looked this up. This toy, I think, was made in like the '40s, so it's been around for a long time. Really? Yeah, I, I was kind of surprised. I thought it was like an '80s toy. Yeah, but it's a magic eight ball and it has like a little dye in there kind of and it has like this dark liquid and you shake it up you ask it a question say mm-hmm. mr eight ball whatever blah 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 and yeah. then you turn it around and like a message pops up yeah and it you could ask you, it like um you know mr eight ball am i gonna pass my math test yes and then exactly you flip it over and it said highly <laughs> unlikely <laughs> all signs point to no <laughs> Yeah, they did it really nice when they're telling you no, but yeah, yeah, it's basically, nah, I don't think so. So I'm going to use this to kind of transition to our topic for today. But before I do, I'm going to put you on the spot and say, is there any question you would like to ask the Magic 8 Ball about relationships before we start? About relationships. Oh my gosh. Um, Okay, let me think of one. Let me think of one. Um, Okay, I got one. Okay. Will Mr. A Ball, will men and women ever understand each other? Oh, that's a good one. It says Outlook not so good. <laughs> I'm with you, A Ball. Like <laughs> see, it knows, at least in the yeah. uh near future, because I'm on the same page with you on A yeah. Ball. All right. Well I've already tried this out a few times and I'm telling you, it's pretty accurate. It's been so far. There may be a little bit. So we're doomed. But yeah. So I'm gonna ask it a question to kind of kick off our topic for today. Uh So Mr. Eight Ball, can you make a long distance relationship work? Mm -hmm. It says what? Pretty hazy. What is this? <laughs> it's accurate. Like, I don't, I don't know how it knows, but it knows. I can't knows. even read this. Let me you see. tell me what this says. Let's see here. Let me read this. <laughs> I was like, I can't even read it. Hold on. I'll be right back. Let me go to more light. Hold on. Okay. Jose is going to go look and see because, um, so the magic, so it, also, too, the Magic Eight Ball hasn't changed very much over the past, I don't know, 80 years. Reply but Reply Hazy, try, try again. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Reply Hazy, we're trying again. I don't know if I, maybe they rephrased it differently. I don't know. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's a weird one, right? That, that is a weird one. I don't remember that one at all. Yeah. But like, okay, But yeah, A-ball. usually the... I think, I think the Eight Ball is deflecting at this point. <laughs> I think he's trying to deflect. Maybe we're asking too serious a question. Okay. I don't know. Mr. Eight Ball, can long distance relationships work? And now it comes up with just yes. Ah, Yay, there you go. Mr. Abel. It is a guy. At first he gives the honest <laughs> answer, and then the second time he gives you the answer that you want. No, yeah. Kidding. So I just thought maybe we could use this from time to time. Sometimes you just want to ask we should. something about love. You're just Genius. not sure. It's the third maybe person. Maybe we don't agree with something, and he, he can be the tiebreaker. But um, So today we're talking about long-distance relationships. <clears throat> I think a lot of people have had this, and there's different forms of long-distance relationships that we're going to kind of break down and talk about. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I'd say a lot of people have probably experienced something like this. And if you've been dating, maybe, well, even if you married your high school sweetheart, I guess, well, we'll get into the different types, but yeah. it can I happen. I mean, there's different reasons for it, right? Right. Um, if you're young, maybe uh, your girlfriend moves away because mm-hmm. her dad got a new job in a different city yeah. or far away. Um, Go could away be, to college. Yeah, it could be that. You were in summer and, you know, you met somebody during the summer or summer on vacation. Exactly, so exactly. sad. <laughs> or even on vacation. Maybe you met somebody on vacation. Maybe you're an adult and you meet somebody on vacation and mm. then like you guys hit it off for that week. And now you're like, hey, you want to yeah. keep in touch? And mm-hmm. you're like, okay, let's, you know. But I will say that it's, uh, <clears throat> it's, 
you got to really, really want to be with this person to even consider. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if people understand all the different things that go into long distance relationships, yeah. but um, they're not easy. Yeah. But anyway. So. Yeah. So some of the different types of long distance um, that I wrote down is the first one is military. So I've dated a few ex-military guys. I've never dated someone who is actively in the military, mm-hmm. but um, my brother served for many years. And so, and he was married while he was in the service and like, I don't know exactly all the difficulties they have, but I can imagine because he had kids with his wife and and he was deployed a lot. Yeah. So that's just a different type of long distance relationship that maybe be temporary yeah. or, I mean, I don't know, I guess you could be, you could be actively deployed at any time. So if you're active in the military, even for like 20 years, maybe most of your marriage could be yeah, kind of and, that situation. And the, and the thing about it is that one is hard. Because you really don't have a lot of choice in that, yeah. right? So it's not like... And you're doing a good thing, so you don't want to tell them no. Well, that too, but but I mean, you know, that aside, right? We'll put that for to, uh, aside for a second. Let's say, again, it's, you're young or you're in love or you fall on vacation, whatever, and you decide to go and do it. At any given point, you can end that relationship, yeah. right? Because you can walk away. It, I'm not saying it's going to be easy and you're just like, eh, whatever. But it, but you can walk away. But when you're married, you yeah. can't just say, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Like you're in it. You're mm-hmm. just going to have to see it all the way through, you know, if you, if you possibly can. And, and sometimes it, it, it can be a little bit too much for, yeah. for certain people. But, but yeah, that's the key difference there. And then it? back in the it's day too, to like away. when we were in like the wars and stuff like that, we didn't have phones and all that kind of stuff. It's like you had to write letters. You may not get a letter from your husband for several months at a time. Now it's different. You could FaceTime you know, and things, it's just really different. I don't Writing know how. letters. Aww. I love handwritten letters. I do too. I had a girlfriend. She used to love doing that. She I'm going to write you a letter. I've had actually <laughs> a few girlfriends that wrote me letters and it is wonderful. It's very sweet. When you get in the mail, you're like, oh, and especially if it's like, you start thinking, it's like, it's not my birthday. It's not, uh-huh. it's you not see, Valentine's like a Day. Card. It's not, you know, like, so you're trying to figure out why they sent it to you and yeah. they, it's just random. They just send you, they just send you cards. Yeah. And they just tell you special little things and you're like, oh. But yeah, it's hard because I mean, it's like you love this person and like I said, they're doing a good thing. So you don't want to say, no, don't do this. But you obviously, you probably don't want them to leave, right? But they're doing something amazing for our country, you know, and so you do respect that. But I think it would be really hard. The mm, still difficult. The worrying, I think, maybe because you have such a high... um, high risk job. I don't know. Just yeah. the worrying would make me feel yeah. sick to myself. Well, that's what I'm saying. Even in situations where you know, it might not be military based, maybe it's career wise. Mm. Maybe the, the person requires, it requires that person to travel a lot. If yeah. they're pilots or flight attendants or, or, um, I mean, they're bus drivers really you know, like, well, yeah. or, or, you know, working on the oil rigs, things like that, where they're gone for a significant amount of time. Yeah. It, Yeah, it's hard. That's actually my next one on here. I put work schedule. So I know you were married to a flight attendant, so you had to deal with this. I did date someone who was in the oil rig, so it was the same thing. They were gone for, I can't remember what it was, was like four days on, three days off or something, whatever the schedule was. But they were gone a lot. And then because they were working weird hours, 16-hour days, overnight, something like that, when you get back, the first day is just you're trying to rest Mm -hmm. because you've had this weird schedule. So... Mm -hmm. That was really difficult, but I was going to say like, as I've gotten older back then, I feel like I wanted someone around more often. I'm not saying I don't want them around, but like if you had someone that maybe, or even like, hmm, let me think, let's say that you work from home and she goes to work. You still have that solitude time at home by yourself. It's great. Yeah. (laughs) Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, like if you want to go hang out with your boys one day, it's like, fine, go, I'll meet up with you later. I'm going to go do other things that I want to do, shopping, boring things to you or go see my girlfriend. I love my me time. I love my me time. Oh, my me time is the best. Yeah. Get to hang out Um, with my favorite person. Another one I wrote down is the internet. So obviously with online dating, there are some people, I knew someone like this that was on the dating apps and they... (laughs) I'm going to say purposely, but they would only talk to girls who lived in other states. Mm -hmm. And I felt, I never called him out on it, but it felt like based on the information he was giving me, it's like you want the flirtiness to stroke your ego, but you have someone far away. So that way you never really have to put in the effort. He didn't ever see these women. It was all internet based. That's genius. 
<laughs> but what would you really get out of that? It's it's almost like having a pin pal. I know. But I remember like, having a pin pal. If if for anybody that I'm dating myself, obviously, but for anybody that had a pin pal, that's how you corresponded. You were friends, but only through letters, right? You wouldn't call each other. It's like, hey, how you doing? And then you'd bring him, bring them up to speed. And yeah. that was the relationship. That was it. It's yeah. very, and that's what I'm saying. Technology now has made things a little bit different in that, you know, but none of it is new. Yeah. None of it is new, not even a little bit, like either whether it's writing letters, sending texts or, you know, whatever. Now, the whether you're physically away from somebody, that that that's still the same. But yeah, that's, I just that's felt genius like, though. I don't know. I feel like for this person, it was clear that, um, and when we're not recording, I'll tell you who this person is because we both know this person. And once I tell you who it is, you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. But like this person was deflecting of wanting to put in the effort because you have to... It, you can mask a lot of stuff when you never actually have to interact with them in person. Yeah, absolutely. So I just think it was more of that. You're talking all these girls that are so far away. You know it's not going to go anywhere, but it's still stroking your ego. You have someone to talk to. You send the good morning text, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, she fantastic. may send you photos, but like... It's wonderful. You're not... Ha- how is that wonderful? Then why don't you do it then? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, how I, is that? I, well, because because I can see, I can see the appeal. I, I I don't know that I would do that because... Just don't get me wrong. Long term, what are you really gonna get out of that? You're still single. Uh, yes, but contrary to popular demand <laughs> or popular belief, I'm sorry, not demand. <laughs> contrary to popular belief, men have an emotional thing that they need to get out too, and sometimes, and I'm not saying that I condone this, but if if you if a guy starts formulating a friendship with a female because he feels like he's not getting judged and he can tell them without, you know what I mean? Like you but said, it's not a friendship. They're not going in there. The guys of being friends. No, no, no. I get it. Oh. But what it's but what, I'm, what I'm getting to is it's fulfilling a need, mm-hmm. which is for them to say stuff. And again, you can kind of gauge whether they accept it or not. Mm. And if they don't, then you could just stop corresponding. No harm, no foul. But if they don't judge you yeah. for it and you tell them and then they're like, Oh, they still accept me. Then you just keep moving forward. Yeah, that was weird. The thing did that move right? Yeah, it was on the side of my eye. Yeah, okay. I was like, okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> There's something on the table that moved suddenly. Yeah, it, um, neither one of us touched it, so we're trying to. Her Mr. AC <laughs> is not on. I swear, your house is haunted. This is an old house. There's some draftiness. There's your, some noises. Your haunted mansion here <laughs> is is haunted, man. I'm telling you, I there's no way that it's not. But I'm okay with ghosts because ghosts typically don't hurt you. So maybe. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you uh, or even like kids now where we're doing a lot of stuff on the Internet, like the gaming and all of that, you know, chatting and stuff, it kind of um, for people who are anxious about in-person things, mm-hmm. it's probably can fulfill that need. I'm just saying For this person, it just seemed kind of sad. It's like you're just going to be single because you're just talking to all these girls that you know it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So, so that's the other part is it's not very healthy. Like, don't get me wrong. You can you can do that, and if 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 it fulfills a certain need, for sure, Mm -hmm. by all means. But I was just talking to a friend of mine, and the conversation was uh, around anxiety. And and bear with me because I'm I'm going to try not to get too off topic, but. but we're talking about anxiety. And so one of the things is sometimes people have anxiety about speaking in public, right? Now, I remember when I was a kid and I refer back to my kid because we didn't have video games when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were, but you had to go to the arcade to go play them and it mm-hmm. cost you a quarter. And like the most I'm going to get is four quarters. <laughs> mm-hmm. A dollar was a lot back then, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially if you were poor, right? So it costs a quarter. It's like, nah, like, well, do I want candy or do I want to play a video game? And that's <laughs> a hard choice. <laughs> most of the time I was going to get the candy because, you know, whatever, video right. game lasts about 30 seconds and then you're dead. So, but, uh, but anyways, we hung out and we talked and you met people in person. And I think when, when after COVID and everything, not meeting people and not talking to them and then all of a sudden being put in a position where you're in a group of people and you're speaking, it's one thing to do it out of Zoom. You're in the comfort of your own home. Mm. Like you can prepare as much as you can. You have your your charts up or whatever and then you can present. But if you're in in person, mm. you don't you don't have that luxury. If things start to go wrong, 
you're just going to have to learn how to adapt, right? Then you, either that or go into a panic attack, which happens a lot too. Yeah, you can't just shut off your computer and pretend you had right, a glitch right. or that's something. Right, that's what I'm saying. So then, so if you go from, you know, with COVID, it lasting about two years, give or take, and some people are still working from home, mm. and then all of a sudden putting them back into the workforce, it might be shocking, especially if it happened early on in their career. Yeah. So let's say they would just got this job and mm. fresh out of whatever, college or whatever, and they're like, yay, now they've lost those two years of interacting with people. Yeah. So it's going to bring them a lot more anxiety. And so if you do that and all you do is text and you never progress it to the next logical stage, which is meeting a person and interacting, you're doing yourself a disservice yeah. because you haven't developed those skills that you will need if you really, really want to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. It's great, but just be careful because it's <laughs> it can also be, it, it could also, you know, hamper your progress if you're really trying to find meaningful yeah. relationships. So. And the last one that I wrote down here, we talked about this a few weeks ago, dating in Dallas, there is a range of mm. cities that are all surrounding, right? Yeah. And Dallas is a lot of traffic. So if you're dating someone that lives an hour from where you live and they could show up in your search, like you said, you put in, here's with my radius, but they'll have people from, you know, an hour, let's say an hour and a half away. Yeah. That we discussed it like it's a long distance relationship because you can't yeah. just snap your fingers and go be like, oh, babe, you know, um, can you come over real quick there? I need help with this one thing. You just, oh, yeah, I'll be right over five minutes, whatever. No, yeah. it's not like that in Dallas. So <laughs> even though it's not technically, but it still feels long distance, you probably do a lot more talking on the phone, a lot more FaceTiming. Maybe you just meet up <laughs> yeah. on the weekend. You know, it's making me laugh because I was thinking of the opposite of that. Uh -huh. And so... Whenever I date somebody and they're, let's say, 45 minutes to an hour away, which I've done a couple of times, yeah, um, I'm actually okay with that. I get more scared when they're, when they live closer because then the, the thing is like, you can't have that excuse of like, oh, I got to prepare to go out there. It's going to be a long trip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. if they want to do something on the fly, oh, gotcha. they're like, they know where you live. You're only like 20 minutes away and they're like, hey, I'm going out for a run or I'm going out to the park. You want to join me? And then if you say no, you know what I mean? You're going to get like, oh, well, why not? And it's like, so I don't want to get up. <laughs> mm, okay. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I would just, if I didn't want to go, I'd be like, I am I have other plans. Like, you, I don't have to say like. I've been, I've been made to feel guilty. Okay. For a guy, I'm sure it's different. Yeah. Because it's like, well, why don't you want to do that? And you're like, oh, mm, 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 you know what I mean? Like yeah. you can't, you can't. Or let's say you just want to hang out with your buddies or whatever. Again, you know, like if it's a long mm. or whatever, you can always make stuff up. But if you're really close, they're yeah. going to be like, you're right there. Yeah. I don't see what the problem is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've dated a couple of people that were, you know, around an hour and it is a process. Like you're like, hey, let's come over and watch movies. Like, and then you have to think about what time you have to leave. Right. Because it's like if you leave at 1 a.m., let's say you end your night typically at 1 a.m., but it's like now you have over an hour drive home. Mm -hmm. At night, you're exhausted. Yep. Yeah, you got to kind of prepare. I guess maybe at that point, maybe you'd spend each other, uh, spend the night at each other's houses. That happens a lot. I mean, I usually, if I know that I'm, we're going to go out and have a late night, mm -hmm. either A, I'll try to sleep in or that I'll say, okay, either I'm going to stay over or whatever. But yeah. you know how I feel about staying over people's I house. I don't like staying over <laughs> people's house. I'm trying to get over that. I'm thinking, you know, it's it's been a while since I've been invited to anybody's <laughs> house, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still not, I don't know why I'm not comfortable with that. It's okay that you, I mean, I'm sure as you like your bed, you have your things, you feel more comfortable, you can kind of get up and do what you please without feeling weird about it. Like if I was staying the night at someone else's house, there's nothing really for me to do when I get up. It's like, I can't like. Yeah, that too. But if, if it's my house, I can get up, I can clean. I, can, I got my routines. Yeah. I always have my routines. But anyway, sorry, I, I digress. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. For me, it's it's uh, sometimes living too close. Is I wouldn't want them living <laughs> down like the street from me. I don't want people popping over. <laughs> well, that too. That yeah. too. If you get to a point where they feel comfortable doing that, which is fine. But again, if you're like, and I'm not saying that you're doing anything wrong, but let's just say you're at your house, you're watching Netflix, you're just dirty you know, you got Cheetos and stuff you on, your, on your shirt. Yeah, you're wearing a robe and uh, at the, with the with the muscle shirt on. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? You like didn't you're shave just, your legs yet. You're just looking rough. And then she comes yeah. over looking all cute and stuff. And you're like, the house is a mess. You know what I mean? Like, oh. I hate people stopping by. And I had, I dated one guy that used to do that all the time. Oof. And like, I know this sounds terrible, but I usually, when I start dating someone new, I'll tell them like, look, 
I don't like people dropping by. So if you come <laughs> over here and I'm not expecting you, I'm not going to answer the door. Just really? so you know. You said that to them? Really? I'm trying to be as honest That's as possible. <laughs> right I'm just saying, right like, on, if I really yeah, hate wow. this thing, you need to respect that I need my space. And if I'm telling you, please do not show up at my house, like, for the same reason. It's not like I'm doing anything bad. It's just like if I'm laying in bed and I'm reading a book and this is my me time and you're banging at my door or whatever, it's like, bro. So I, I, I would say that um, that would be okay if, if you were to say that, I think if a man were to say that, we might get ourselves yeah. in trouble for saying that. I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> but I would never do that to anyone that else yeah, either. So I don't like, know that that's a good or bad thing, but I just know that because I'm sure there's a lot of men that feel the same way. We just are not allowed to say that. Didn't you accuse me of start that last week that I was turning into a man or something? Yeah. Like, like my mentality is so masculine. <laughs> it's getting there, yeah. <laughs> but or yeah, you have I a mean, lot of male tendency. Let's I do. Put it that way. But, but I, I, I totally hate it, understand though. But I wouldn't do it to anyone else either. I've yeah. never showed up just hey. No, me no, neither. Dude. I, so I typically, and you know this, I won't even call unless I get permission first. Like. Before I can call, I call you, you, yeah. you do te- you can ask me like, hey, can I call yeah, you? I'm like, yeah, you can call me. Well, I feel that, that to me, it's it's the same thing. It's yeah. like I don't know. You might be busy right now. You might be entrenched yeah, in a movie. Yeah, but I could just not answer, and it's okay. You could, but that would just waste my time. <laughs> I don't want to waste <laughs> your minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't want to do that because then, like, let's just say, for, let's play this out. Okay, I'll call you up, and and let's say you're watching a movie or or a documentary on Netflix where. Okay. <laughs> Everybody got murdered. and uh, uh. But anyways, so you're watching that and you're into it, right? Because it's getting to the good part and uh-huh. they're talking about the good stuff. So then you see me calling and you're like, yeah, I want to finish this. So you don't pick it up. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. She's probably doing oh, something. Great. So she's probably doing something, blah, blah. I w- obviously wanted to talk, but now I have to make other arrangements because it's not going to happen. So now I start doing something, blah, blah, blah. You finish your bit 20 minutes later. Now I'm doing something that I'm into. <laughs> Like you had your chance. You know what I'm saying? And so if I do the same thing, we're just not going to talk to each other. Or let's say I pick up because I know you're returning my call, but now I have to stop whatever I'm doing, which I was enjoying because, you know, see what I'm saying? You know what's funny? Your response is when I do respond to you like, hey, I'll call you later or or something like that. You'd be like, oh, it's okay. We'll just talk next week. And I'm like... <laughs> I'll call you in an hour. Like, it's not that, but you're, you're just so like, no, nah, I'll talk to you in five days. Because sometimes <laughs> like, it's a window because I know you're working and I know your schedule. <laughs> so I know that there's a window and then I know you have your routines. <laughs> and so sometimes if I miss my window, I just figured, okay, we, you know, we could talk, we could talk at a later time. Yeah. So that, uh, I just give you that option, man. Yeah. But yeah, I do do that a lot, actually. Mm. But I also wrote down to some pros and cons of long distance relationships. So I'm going to go through some of the pros first. Um, The first one I have is makes the heart grow fonder, the -hmm. distance. Mm -hmm. This is what a lot of people say. So it kind of goes hand in hand with you're always in that honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm. Definitely prolongs it. Yeah, exactly. So it's like just like we talked about before, taking people for granted and things like that. If they're always there, it's easier to do that. But if you're dating someone, let's say that they're one week, one week off and one week on. Mm-hmm. So it's like you only have two weeks out of the month to see them. And you both, I mean, you're working stuff. So it's not like you can see them those seven days, but like you're probably going to feel more excited like to see them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because, well, there's a good, there, I mean, there's a good side and a bad side to that. Mm. The good side is that, yes, typically if you do that and both partners are doing that, when you finally do see each other face to face, it'll be that much more meaningful because, again, you're not going to focus on all the the little nitpicky things mm-hmm. because it's like I don't have a lot of time. Like I don't I don't want to waste time. Like you you did the dishes wrong or, you know, you you didn't you didn't put the toilet seat back down. Mm-hmm. You're like I'm not going to worry about that right now because – I only have you for a week or two. Right. So I don't want to waste my time fighting with you or or getting onto you. Mm -hmm. The downside of that is that if they're gone a lot, you can possibly formulate a false um, uh, perception of them. Mm -hmm. Because again, you're not focusing on all the little things. Mm -hmm. So you're just focusing on the good, which means that you might end up idolizing them or, or, or what's the word? 
you're making them out to be something that they're not. Mm-hmm. They're flesh and blood just like everybody else. Yeah, because right? let's say their schedule changes and now they're here all the time. Right, and you see, right. And you're like, you change. It's like, no, you just saw all the good stuff. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so that happens too because you have a vision of them because all you have is your memories. And again, you get to pick and choose your memories, mm-hmm. right? Most of the time we pick mostly negative stuff and those pop out a lot. But that doesn't mean you didn't have positive experiences. Whenever I get along with, with somebody that's telling me all the bad stuff in the relationship, it's like there had to have been some good. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way that like at some point you guys were together, you were you were digging each other at some point. I don't know if it's love or not, but you were digging each other. And so if you guys get put together for a year and all you have is bad stories, it seems a little bit off, right? Yeah. And then I start asking the follow-up question like, well, why did you stick with them? Right. And you know what I mean? And that's when the story starts to break down a little bit because it's like there had to have been something good. You don't, if somebody annoys you and you hate, why would you ever be with them? Right. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. You have to be very careful and just understand that they are people. Mm-hmm. And then, cause that does happen a lot Yeah. when pilots retire or they can't, you know, travel anymore and they're at home, it sometimes will become an issue. <laughs> or if you're off deployment or something, we talked about the military thing, like, you're now you just are at home for like nine months and they've been gone for so long and you're running the ship and everything. Yeah. I mean, well, and I don't know if you're going to talk about this. I don't want to skip too, too far along, but it's also when, when you're in a long distance relationship, even when you're in close proximity, you still kind of have a life, Mm -hmm. but, but with that life, you can kind of, you know, the day to day. So depending on if they're, if they're, if your long distance relationship means that you guys can't talk every day mm-hmm. or it's limited because you both have jobs or whatever, so there's like a small window, yeah, you might be able to catch up on your day-to-day stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you were here, obviously you had more access to them. So if you went out, they would give you a lot more details about their job, right. about their friends, about the stuff, so about their life yeah. outside of you. And if you're in a long distance relationship, you don't know what that is. Yeah. So when they come back, they're, they want you to, they're used to you stopping and doing what you're doing to pay attention to me because I'm here yeah. now. But it's like, yeah, I did that, but I had a life outside of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, let's say I went to church uh, every Sunday and I volunteered on Wednesdays and Thursdays and I did the PTA or, you know, whatever. I have a bowling league or, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. you're into. And so they're going to be like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't jive. Like, you know what I mean? Like I knew you had it, but I guess it really wasn't real. And now that I'm here and you're leaving (laughs) and I'm at home like what's happening but that's that's another part is that when you do finally get back together you have to form that life together and 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 realize that because because you're away from each other and so far away you have a life in that area it'd be really hard to get to know someone really you know it's kind of like they say like you don't really know someone until you live with them you know all the little nooks and crannies of who they are but yeah, if you're gone a lot, I'm not saying you don't care about them. I'm not saying you can't fall in love, of course. But like, how do you really know them? Because you're not seeing those little day-to-day things. Like, right. let's say you never see them get frustrated because right. they're here and it's almost like they're on vacation when they right. come see you. It's like, right. you don't know what that's like. Right, right. So it depends. Like if you, let's say if you guys got to, and it's both, both, both scenarios happen, right? Where you're, let's say you get together, let's say you're married for two or three years and then... Mm-hmm. Now you're apart from one another. Yeah. So you did have a little time to figure each other out or you start out with that. Like, again, you met at for a week and then you decided to make it long distance. And, yeah, you flew over there and mm-hmm. you flew back and blah, blah, blah. So uh, both ways can work. But, yeah, the, the, the problem is still the same mm-hmm. is that when you're apart, you're going to make new lives for yourself. Mm-hmm. Even if you did live with them, let's say you lived together three, four years before he decided to join the military and was away. Um, at that point, he's going to make all his own life over there with the guys mm-hmm. and whatever they do over there. And you're going to have to figure out your life over here. Yeah. And, and so you're going to be a part of that. Yeah. And they're, they're, because they're, they're having different experiences in different areas or whatever, they might not be exactly the same when they come back. <laughs> yeah. They might have some same tendencies, but they might have grown as a person because they've done new things and they've experienced new, um, Whatever, yeah. right? So that kind of leads into the next one, which is having the me time. It's good to be able to have your separate time to go do all the things that they either may not want to do or you do enjoy doing alone without the other person feeling like, like if you're dating someone that's here 
And let's say that every day you go play softball somewhere. It's your hobby. That's what you like to do. And let's say it's at a peak time, like maybe 6 to 8 p.m. Yeah. The person's probably not going to like that because like that's the prime time they would be able to like get to hang out with you. But if you're long distance, let's say that when they are here, you make a point where like, okay, this week that you're here, I'm not going to go play softball. I'm going to be here with you, right? right? So it's kind of like, I think that's a very positive thing where everybody has their alone time and I can go do whatever. Or sometimes in a relationship, like, like I'll see you on the weekends, right? But let's say it's like, okay, I'm going to do my thing in the morning, in the afternoon. I'll meet up with you at 6 p.m. Yeah. And we can have a great night. We can go out, we do whatever. But it's like, I still have the whole day to myself, which makes me feel good. Yeah. It so, should. It should. I think everybody has different parts of their life that need to be satisfied. You, yeah. Your career, your family, your extended family, your friends, like, in your hobbies, right? Yeah. And sometimes that's with friends. Sometimes it's by yourself. I mean, yeah, alone time is fantastic. I love my alone I mean, time. yeah, but not everyone's like that. There are people who want their partner to They're be... needy. Oh, <laughs> codependency. Stop. It happens. Oy, oy, oy. I understand. Like I said, I mean, all these things, I mean, it's not going to be for everybody. Like if you're one of those people... It would probably be better for you to be with someone else who's like that because that can be really frustrating in a relationship if you are codependent and your partner is not. Mm -hmm. I've been in that scenario. You know me. I like my alone time. So it's uh, like if they're trying to be around all the time, I would have to tell them like, look, it's not against you. It's just like I like my alone time. So can we just... <laughs> You again, laugh, it's, like, okay, it's again, a girl can say that because the movie that I was thinking about is uh, I Love You, Man. Remember? Mm -hmm. I Love You, Man? Because that's what the problem was, is that he didn't have any friends. Yeah. So she was like, you're great, Paul Rudd. Yeah. <laughs> you're but adorable. you're around too much. <laughs> and you make me hot chocolate for my girlfriends. And you're so sweet. Your mom's your best friend. That right? was messed up when she said, I think his best friend is his mom. Right. That was mean. I don't think she was wrong, though. I know, but it's terrible. Just he but, hearing that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. But I think some people, yeah, if, if they're, let's say their love language is spending quality time together, it's hard for them. Even that and combined with physical touch, again, if you're not around them and you're not, you know, constantly, you know, showing them love that way, it's hard. Yeah. They, 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 they would probably struggle more in a long distance relationship than, yeah. than, than normal folks. Yeah. It's not going to be for everybody. There's some yeah. people we talk about. And but a long time is fantastic. And like I said, when a guy tries to do that, it doesn't matter how nice, mm. it doesn't matter what script, I don't care what words that you say and how gentle you put it and how you emphasize that it's all about you. Mm -hmm. The woman typically takes it personal. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to be around me. You just, and I was like, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, you know, I need to recharge and this is good for my I wonder health. how women would be able to, like, what is it that women want to hear when a guy's saying that? What's a good approach? There is no good. That's what I'm saying. I don't care how nicely you put it. They're, they're, they're not going to like it. Maybe a way where they'll understand they no, won't no. <laughs> like it. They will not like it unless they're I'm trying the, to find a solution. I'm right there with you. I, I I don't know. The best that you can do is be um be honest and 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 gentle about it. And hopefully you can explain it in such a way that they'll understand. But most of the time they just don't. They they take it very personal. Like oh, you just don't want to be with. It. I don't know if you've experienced that with the guys that you've done. Maybe they haven't articulated it, but I would imagine that they would also feel a little. Oh, like, guys oh. hate that about me. Yeah. They they <laughs> hate that I want my alone time. And I try to explain it like, look, I've lived alone for so long, like more than half of my life. So it's like, yeah. it's hard for me to have someone right here all the time. Yeah. They don't like it. That's I mean, like that's the number saying. one complaint I get. That's what I'm saying. But, you know, they'll, <laughs> they'll probably hang in with you. But for me, not so much. <laughs> I don't know. Not so much. They're just like, I'm just going to go find a dude that wants to hang out with me. I don't know. I've been know. broken up with a time or two, so I don't know about that one. But um, the other one for a pro. Now, I know this can be a con, too. So it's on the con list as well. But Appendix. it's supposedly supposed to help with communication and building trust. So if you have a long distance relationship and you don't trust the other person, it's probably not going to work out for you. Mm. So sometimes because you have limited time mm -hmm. together, um, you may be able to 
build that communication. You're speaking more probably on the phone. Mm -hmm. So it's not just being in proximity with someone. It's like you're having to speak to them. So you're probably learning more about them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like I said, for this pro part, it can help with communication. What's that, the jealousy part? No, I'm saying this is the pro section. So I'm saying it's a pro and a con. But I'm saying if you trust that person, you guys can build a really good relationship because you're probably having more uh, vocal interactions. In a long distance relationship? Yes, that's what we're doing. Well, no, I was, I I thought it was, okay. So, so just being absent, as you're saying, it could, could help out because you have to communicate in different ways. Right. I got you. And better. So it's like, that's what I'm saying. Like if you're, if I'm dating a guy that lives here and let's say he comes over and we just watch TV, we're not really communicating. We're just like, whatever. Right. But when you're long distance, you kind of, you have to have communication. It has to be some kind of schedule. Like, yeah. okay, I'm going to call you at five. Yeah. Whatever. Let's do a FaceTime date at five. Yeah. You know, I'll be available. Let's say you're in different time zones yeah. or something like that. Yeah. All these and things. And that could be more to, meaningful than, than being here is what you're saying. Like being here and just hanging out. Yeah. You might not get as much. Right. Even though that's the irony of it. And you that, have to trust them. It's like, you have to take that leap of faith of like, I know you're somewhere else mm-hmm. and it's probably pretty easy for you to get involved with someone else because mm. you're far away, but I'm going to have to trust you. you got to call you. me at every time at this time so that we can talk. <laughs> Why didn't you answer? Exactly. We don't need you out there getting into some tomfoolery. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. You better be. Why didn't you call me? Nine o'clock is when you need to call me, young mm. man. Ooh. Yeah. But I mean, I'll lean over to the cons now. So in that, the mistrust part, it can be very toxic if you don't trust that person because especially for the person who feels insecure. By the way, it can't be done. Yeah, I don't. It can't be done. Even if you do make it, it's so toxic and you're just prolonging it just because you don't want to leave or whatever. But yeah, you can't, if you don't trust that person, you're going to be either constantly accusing them or you're going to be constantly feeling bad and jealous, which is not a good feeling. Mm. So it's like, it's this constant state of uncertainty yeah. that doesn't feel good. No, I get it. Yeah. That's yeah. No, I don't, I don't think jealous people are, can, can be in long distance relationship. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I just, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't jive. Yeah. Cause they would just torture themselves every night. They just, just they, they just torture themselves. There's no way they that they would be able to sleep or or do anything. Yeah. And then what would happen is when they did come home, it would become an issue. That yeah. would be the entire fight, and then you would go off. So no, that wouldn't. It wasn't wouldn't long distance, but I did know someone who was married, and her husband had an affair. And and now look, if you want to give him a second chance, and it's fine, and you have your own ways of working it out. But what she was doing was making him FaceTime with her like all day, every day when she was at work and he, you know what I mean? It's like, once that trust is gone, it's gone. What's the point? It's gone. Once Like if they're going to cheat on you, they're going to cheat on you and you FaceTiming with them all day long to make sure, where are you at now? Uh, Where are you going now? They're they're coming from a a, a dark emotional space and there's no logical, you can't think, I'll think your way out of that one. Because the only way to really deal with that is for you to deal with, with, with that with that trauma mm. and dealing with that trauma. And then that's going to be your way out of that. But yeah, for them, they just chose to have it every hour on the hour. Yeah. Which is not a good thing to do. Um, another con obviously is loneliness. Um, not having somebody there um, for just the little things. And let's say you, you do like to snuggle before bed and they're just oh, not there. Snuggles. Snuggles. I love snuggles. You don't like snuggles. I know, oh. I don't like I don't even know how, how did you, uh, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I told I'm you I do it from it time again. to time to accommodate. It's just, it's just I, I, you're just one of the few people that I've met that doesn't like cuddling. I don't think I've ever met another person that says I don't like cuddling. I can't Honestly, be the only one. <laughs> I, I don't know any other people that I've ever talked to that says I don't like Thank to cuddle. Thank you for singling me out. No, I'm just <laughs> saying, like, it's a unique, we ought to put you in a museum. <laughs> And study you. So I want my own space. I don't like snuggling. And and this this goes for men and women. That's what I'm saying. I've never, uh, you know, I guess my ex-wife actually didn't like to snuggle that much either, believe it or not. Okay, see? Yeah. I mean, I would still do it anyways, but uh, but yeah, I guess I never really thought about that. Hmm. Didn't work out with me and her. Well, I'm just saying, you say you didn't know anybody. It turns out you were married to one. Yeah, I think um, it was. But yeah, the loneliness. Huh. And then another one is missing important dates or events. 
So let's say that Mm. they can't be here for the holidays. Let's say that your birthday rolls around and they're, you know, overseas, um, you know, going to your family's house. You're always alone. I feel like you're alone depending on their schedule, right? For a lot of events. And that can be really hard. It is. And you know, it's even harder, but it's not hard, but it's just, and it's not awkward, but it's borderline awkward because people will ask you when you go to events, where's Tom? Uh (laughs) It's like... If I hear that question one more time, everywhere you go, yeah. you go to your parents' house. Where's Tom? Oh, he's doing the blah, blah, blah. Then you go to your friends and you're meeting up. Oh, how's Tom doing? What does he do up to? Oh, This is why I don't tell people when I'm dating unless I'm like for serious. Like this is because I don't want to have to hear that when it doesn't work out. Where's Tom at? <laughs> well, no, he but ain't I'm around just saying anymore. That, but if you're in a long distance, they yeah. still ask you because they know. know you're in a long distance relationship. They would ask you even if they lived in close proximity. Yeah. But it's the an innocent is, question, but it still makes you feel bad. Well, and the, the other thing is that like if he's here, they would already know that he's here. So the question wouldn't be like, what is he up to or what mm. has he been doing? It's like, what is he doing today? Yeah. And he's like, oh, he's playing tennis with, you know, George or whatever. But, but, or Tom and George playing <laughs> tennis. <laughs> But my point being is like that's that's an easy that I, we're out you know we're into the next one. Yeah. But if it's a long distance, you would have to go into like, well, you know, he got promoted and blah blah blah, blah and now he's doing this, and it turns into a whole thing. And yeah. then you would have to say that every single time at every event that you go to that you show up alone. I would hate to go to like weddings alone. That seems like it would be sad. <laughs> Like, you know, everyone's coupled up and you're just sitting there at the table with maybe they set you with the kids or something like you're at this horrible table and you're like, yeah, it's, it's hard because even at events like that, like, and depending on the person, because I'm not saying you couldn't have fun at those, at those, at those places because you can't have fun, but there is a limit to how much fun you can have. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you're going to be miserable maybe, but it's just like traveling. But that's what I'm saying. The temptation is there because if you're at a wedding and your significant other, let's say she works, you know, and she works out of town a lot, Mm. but I want to have fun. I start drinking. I have fun. Let's say I'm a good dancer. I start dancing with a couple of gals and you know what I'm saying? Like it's a very intimate thing. It's a, it's a dance mind you, but now you're having too much fun. Mm. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And so that's how things, that's how sometimes, unfortunately, they get caught up and they do things that they're not supposed to because they had too much fun. So you have to remember like, okay. You got to keep yourself in check. Yes. More so. Yes. Because it's like, I'm in a relationship and nobody's going to hold me accountable but me Mm -hmm. because Tom is out of town. Yeah. (laughs) He went to a tennis convention. (laughs) Yeah. He went to a tennis convention. So now I'm going to have to hold it down and I have to remember I can't get too liquored up because I might do something that I regret yeah. the next day, jeopardize the whole thing. And then, you know, things. Well, obviously that's bad. part of the trust thing. That's what I'm saying. There's, it's, it's way easier to, to stray if you're far away, not only because the likelihood of you getting caught isn't very great, but it's just, there's, like you said, there's matter. no one holding yeah. you accountable. It's like, yeah. if I did this thing, you may never, you may do something and you're like, you never reveal it. It's going to eat away at your conscience. Well, if you're not a sociopath or a psychopath, it's going to eat away at your conscience. You're going to start feeling guilty about it. It might come up. But, and I don't know if you, and I don't mean to, to jump ahead, but, you know, based on the pros and the cons and, you know, there's, but at the same time, I'm assuming that the ultimate is that eventually... You don't do that. So I mm-hmm. guess in a situation where it's work based, mm-hmm. if you're married, it's hard because you can't just stop. Right. Right. So you have to have that conversation with them to say like, look, I don't know that I can do this anymore. You know, I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm really struggling with it. Yeah. I'm really having a hard time with maintaining the relationship the way it's going right now. Mm. And then you would have to have a hard, you know, like hopefully... You can have that really That's good a hard position. To it be really in. is because if it's if it's work and you've been together for a long time, it's difficult. Yeah, because your needs will change. And let's and, say you love that job, and it's like, do I give up this job that I love exactly to please my spouse? Yeah, it's hard. which I also love, but it's like, what do you do? Yeah, and so, but sometimes people just it it it, it becomes too much for them to handle. Yeah, and especially if it's like in that situation where they're very social creatures. And they want to be out and about. Mm. They want to be with you, mind you, right? Yeah. Or at least you being home and that's going to keep them, that's going to keep them focused, let's say, right? Because yeah. affairs can still happen in close proximities, but at least this way it's like you can't blame it on the long distance right. thing. Um, and he's, he's right there, so you shouldn't be doing anything, you know, whatever. But yeah, I think 
all, but if it's a different situation where it's short term, boyfriend, girlfriend, say you're going to different colleges, different states or different cities, like ultimately you want to get together, right? Like, don't you? So like. There's a hard stop. Yeah, there's there's an end game, if you will, right? right? So that's a different one because it's like, okay, this is temporary. Mm -hmm. I only have to do this for a year or two. Let's do this. You know, yeah. it's a marathon. Let's get mm -hmm. through it. Maybe and they go back that, to school or something. Yeah, and, and, like, and so at that point, you're like, okay, now that that's finished, there's an end goal. Now things are going to change. Now we can be together, blah, 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 blah. So it, it, it's different. That's what I'm saying. Like, it depends on where you're at because at some point, even with the job, you'll retire. Yeah. And you might not like it at that point. You might want them gone. Yeah, I like it more if I was by myself during the week where I'm working, I'm taking care of things and running errands or whatever. But on the weekend, I am a social person, so I like to be out. And you're right. It's like I want to go out with my partner, but if he's not here, I can't just stay at home every weekend. Right. I'm not saying I'm going to go out and cheat. I'm just saying that right. like I have to go do things you have to, yeah. like I can. Yeah, but anyways, um, and another con is it's expensive. It's expensive. If you have to fly out to see your partner, I don't know what the, um, I guess you guys decide how often you can do that, but I guarantee you that's going to get real expensive. It depends. What do you mean it depends? You know, if I'm balling, I ain't worried about it, girl. Okay, because there's so many rich guys out I'm, there. I'll fly you in every weekend, baby. <laughs> sure. Get in here. Going to Spain for the weekend. We'll be on spirit, but, you know, <laughs> but I'll still fly you in. Yeah. Um, and then I just have some ways to like help make it work. Um, so one of them is FaceTime. Mm -hmm. So being able to, I love, I love talking on the phone and I could talk on the phone forever, but being able to see them, I know it's not the same as them being here, but it probably makes people feel really good. Just seeing their facial expressions yeah. when you're talking. Yeah. Um, another thing is when they are here, try really hard not to fight while they're here. If you have some kind of issue, maybe you do talk to face to face, but like that kind of stuff maybe should be like phone conversations. Cause when, if you have such a small amount of time that you're physically together, you yeah. don't want to be arguing the whole time. Yeah. That's yeah. going to ruin. I can't. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, if, if you're away from work and then when you are here, you're just in a bad mood the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know it's going to be really hard, but, um, another thing is when they're here, be really engaged with them. So let's say that they're gone three weeks out of the month and they're here for a week. When you're here, you guys need to be doing things together. That's not the time of like, Oh, I'm going to meet up with my friends like for several days in a row or, oh, I'm going to go on this hunch. I understand like given if you're married, there's going to be times where you can't, like he may come home for that week and then he's going on a hunting trip with his boys for the whole week. So that may be a whole month that you don't see him. Yeah. I understand there's compromises, but you should try really hard to accommodate them for the time that they're here. Or like I said, if you're in different time zones, there yeah. may only be a short amount of time that you're both awake and yeah. can speak on the phone. So you should try to, out of respect, Make sure you're available at that time. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt on your list, but go ahead. I'm okay. Sorry, go ahead. Um, and the other thing is reassuring them. Mm -hmm. And this can be in different forms, but whatever it is that your partner needs to reassure them, like, I am in this. I'm here for you 100%. Don't let it get where your partner is unsure about your loyalty, your commitment, that kind of thing, yeah. you should be able to talk. And like I said, if it's showing through different love languages or maybe just telling them, mm -hmm. you know, on a whatever basis, like just to let you know, I'm, I'm here for the long haul. We're in this together. And then the last one I have is joining each other's inner circles. So if you're married or not, let's say you're a serious relationship or married, spending time with maybe their family, maybe their parents when they're gone, something like that, keeping that kind of close knit um, relationships, or maybe you guys have mutual friends mm -hmm. staying in contact with those people. Um, it's kind of like, not that they're keeping their eye on you, but it's like, oh yeah, I'm keeping an eye on Jessica. You know, we, my wife and I went out with her this weekend and, you know, just, I don't know, keeping it where you have mutual friends or hanging out with their family or whatever, something that you can bond over, even if they're not mm -hmm. physically there. I don't know, maybe if you're, let's say you're married and then your husband's gone a lot, but maybe you're really close to his mother and that still probably makes him feel good that you have it, that relationship. It, it might, but I mean, <clears throat> if you do long distance for a long time, mm -hmm. right, and you're away from your partner 
for for extended periods of time, let's say half the time they're gone, that which is a lot, right? You both have to learn how to self-soothe. Mm-hmm. And that in and of itself can sometimes be a little bit detrimental because you have to learn it. There's no way around it. Right. Because even though they're they are a phone call away, doesn't necessarily mean that they're always going to be available, even if that's our window, right? Like, okay, I know he gets home and, you know, between the time he goes to bed and the time he gets home, it's like from six to nine. Mm. That doesn't mean that he's available from six to nine. That's just when he doesn't, you don't know anything that he has on his books, Right. right? He might have something. He might go out with friends. He might be out and about. You just don't know. So if you're having a bad day or a bad time or you had a bad experience or whatever, there's nobody for you to talk to. Again, you could call your mom, you could call other people, but they have the same thing too. And I'm not saying that they wouldn't be um, accommodating, right? But yeah. they have their lives too. Right. So they're going to think like, don't you have a boyfriend? Like they, they might not say it, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like, isn't that what a significant other is for, for these types of situations? I feel it's like, the good and the bad, but you know. yeah. I feel like that's a big window for probably where you may stray more because like you said, if you can't self-soothe, you may be like, well, I'm just going to go out or let me, this coworker that's been friendly, let me just go hang out because I want someone to talk to or whatever. And then it turns really quick. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I'm saying. You're already in an emotional state. Yeah. And I don't care if you're a guy or a girl. It doesn't matter. Emotional states are not the best time to make decisions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For men or women, just people in general, it's not a good idea to make decisions when you're emotionally uh, charged. Mm-hmm. And so you're right. Not everybody can self-soothe. Some people are built in such a way that they need to be around other people. That's yeah. how they need to deal with it. Because dealing with your problems without any help is a very difficult skill set to mm-hmm. do. And, and don't get me wrong, it's good and it's bad, right? It's good because you learn how to handle things on your own. So you become less and less dependent on people. But because you are that way, whether you're a male or female, mind you, because this, this goes both ways. Because you're that way, people sometimes might find you cold. Because let's say you're dealing with your partner and you're, let's say you, like for me, I've dealt with situations where I had to self-soothe all the time. Mm -hmm. So I've just learned how to cope in my own way Mm -hmm. and figure it out, right? Whether I'm lonely, had a bad day, trauma, just everything. I've just had to figure it out on my own. And then you get with somebody that's not used to doing it on their own. They're used to talking it out and then they start talking to you and it's just like, you're sympathetic, mind you, and you're empathetic. You understand what they're going through, but the the hard part that you can't figure out is like, oh, like you can't deal with it by yourself. You would never say that because you know that they're not used to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But but let's say you help them through it and you're just supportive, right? And that's sometimes enough. You support them and then you you move on. So then when you're dealing with something, they'll never know. Mm-hmm. Maybe you, they'll see it on your face, but that's part of your process, right? Let's say something's bothering you and you're just not accustomed to talking to people about it because you just learn how to self-soothe. Then they're going to start asking you questions like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm dealing with something right now. I just need to, you know, kind of process it, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, do you want to talk about it? And I'm like, no, nah, not really. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm good not talking about it. Then it becomes a thing. Then it becomes a thing because they're like, hey, I want to be your partner. You should be able to tell me stuff, which is true. But it's just like, but I'm dealing with it. So like, can I just deal with it on my own? And that's the part for me that I've been having such a hard time with yeah. is that they're expecting me to share my, um, the things that I'm going through and I'm just not accustomed to doing that. Yeah. It, I mean, I've did it for 17 years by myself. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the time that I was married. Obviously before then there were times I had to deal with stuff on my own too. It's a hard habit to break, yeah. to talk to people, believe it or not. It's a very, very hard thing to do. So anyways, so when people, when I've seen people work, um, make long distance relationships work, it's really, it's a matter of choice. Yeah. And they're both extremely strong individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes when they do come back, it doesn't always end well. Yeah. Typically it's when they come back and and then they figure out that they don't, they don't have anything in common and they're like, nah, I guess it didn't work out and that's it. Yeah. You, know, you move on. I would so. say the main thing with long distance is just you got to put in the effort. If you, if you effort. don't want to put in the effort or you, or you can't, then long distance relationships is not for you. Yeah. So it's tough. What does the eight ball say? About oh, I don't know. It? I was going to like, uh, <laughs> like, um, 
say goodbye with if you wanted to ask it one more question before we end? No, I don't know. What do you want to ask it? Um, There's some questions I don't want to know about. Was this a good episode? Can I be can I be morbid? Outlook good. Okay, good. What? <laughs> Morbid? Like what? I was going to say, is am I going to outlive you? I just meant relationship <laughs> questions. This is dark. Okay. Host, well, I do host, have a Mr. April. Marilyn Manson in front of me. So yeah. like I can't stay I away do. from the dark. I have Marilyn Manson's he's, mugshot behind me. He's staring you. right in front of me. Every time I come here, he's looking right at me. Okay. I just asked it if you're going to outlive me and it says, yes, definitely. <laughs> So prepare. Well, I guess I should be prepared. Oh my gosh! No, that's gonna be my. I mean, that's gonna be my punishment. I'm sure. Is that I'll outlive everybody. <laughs> and then you Mr. Mister, you can deal with stuff on your own. Uh-huh. You like your alone time? We'll give you, give you some alone time. You dang right. Give you too much of it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's it's um, it's hard, right? Because even in that situation, like I said. Even if you do start talking to somebody else about your stuff, you can, and you know how I feel about it, but, you know, that emotional uh, affair that you have with somebody else, which I don't know if it's a thing or not. I'm still on the fence. I kind of get it that it could be. We can do an affair episode and we can. Yeah, but but emotional one or not. But, but, But my point is the same is that if you don't have anybody else to talk to about it and you can't talk to your partner you know, you, your your choices are limited. Yeah. Very, very. And sometimes it's a bit too much for anybody. It's hard. This life is hard. And going through this life by yourself is even harder. Yeah. It's no fun whatsoever. Okay. Well. Magic 8-Ball. Yep. It's here to stay. But uh, till next time. Till next time. Adios. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. <laughs>